The date, 23rd of March 2023. The place, a general test day at Donington Park. But it's not just any general test day. I've been kindly invited by GT and touring car legend Bobby Vernon Rowe to test his quite unbelievable Lister Storm GT1 car. First produced in 1993, it's 7 litres of V12 Jaguar GT1 car to World Championship specifications, producing almost 600 horsepower and capable of a top speed of 208 miles per hour, running through a 6 speed manual sequential Hewlin gearbox. In other words, it is an absolute monster to be dancing through the massive traffic at this general test day at Donny. But I cannot wait to get behind the wheel and have a little bit of a chat to Bobby about his history with this incredible privateer GT car. Bobby Verden Road, how did you come to be a driver of the uh, fantastic Lister Storm? I was a GT driver, I, was dri I drove for TBR for a number of years and I raced against uh, the Listers a lot and um, they mostly beat me, I have to say, <laughs> and uh, they, were, yeah, they were very competitive all over Europe and I just wanted to drive one and uh, got to know the team boss, Lawrence Pierce, and then 2002, the whole season and thereafter I sort of raced a lot. You think about Lister alongside Ferrari, alongside Aston Martin, alongside all of the great names in, in GT1 racing, and the thing's a giant killer, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, I think it's an extraordinary story, considering it's, you know, it's not, not a huge factory. There was, you know, the workshop was you know, not that big. They did amazing things you know, with very little money, um, obviously some very good drivers and uh, a very good car. What do you think about it made it strong it, against you know, what, what, do you, what, was the, what was the magic bullet in those days in, in GT1? Well, I think it's a little bit of everything, but as you saw today, it's got fantastic traction. Um, it had very good aero. For, you know, it was, it was you know, superior to pretty much anything in high-speed corners in particular. Um, and you know, it had a very sort of talky, very good engine as well. So, the Jaguar V12. Jaguar V12, yeah, very old design, but you know, it was, I suppose it's the final, ultimate iteration of that particular motor, you know, that started in the 60s. So where, where, where did that engine, where was that engine originally used? Do you know, the, where did it come uh, in from? the E-Type. Oh, so it's, yeah. a, so it's the, the V12 engine from the, from the from the later E-Type? It's the same block. Wow. Yeah, so from the 60s onwards, it was, yeah, it being used in the 70s. And, you know, apparently, you know, the way you build a sort of Lister Storm engine is to go to the scrapyard and buy a, an old <laughs> Jag V12 engine that's been lying around for sort of 20 years and build it up into a, into a sort of 600 horsepower monster. Line it with carbon fibre, yeah. put proper brake system on it, yeah. big sequential gearbox. Yeah, and, human uh, gearbox, very good gearbox. And go, and go racing with yeah. it, what, what an incredible thing. Where could you race one then? 
Um, if, if you, so it's a good cus, customer racing car, or was, was there a factory team? It was mainly the factory team. There were some, I drove for, for a privateer team in 2003 that ran them. The one we, we drove today is a GTM model, 2000 car. Um, in 97, there was a GTL. I think they built two of them. It was very small numbers, you know. It, I don't know, where, there must be seven or eight cars in total. Um, there was one in 96, two in 97, one in 98, I think, a car, all carbon car. And then they built the GTMs, which were, there was a few of them, five or five or so. down in this hairpin here, you either want first, which you don't really want to do because you, you never know and why, or you want to pop your in and then it kind of like jacks around itself and doesn't really know why you're going so slowly and then yeah. picks up, but yeah. Cool, cool thing. Tell me about the exact chassis we uh, we drove today. What's its history? From from where does it derive? Well, it's G GCM 002 chassis two. Um, it was built in 2000. It did the whole championship. Obviously, won it. Won quite uh, six or seven races that year. And then it was uh, sold to Creation in 2003. And we raced it in 2003 for the whole FI GC Championship and I did 2004 as well and I did I think the, the, the Spa 24 hours that year with them and two, I think it did 2005 as well maybe in France with the, for the French GC Championship. How long have you owned it for? I bought it uh, from uh, Creation in gosh I can't remember now 2007 or so I think. So, so you bought it straight off the back of, of basically having having raced it, or the, the team that you raced it with, finishing racing it, and, and, yeah. and you've owned it, and you've owned it ever since. I've owned it ever since. What is it about that car, where you it finished its sort of in period career, let's say, and you went, I want to own that. It was the quickest GT car. I was, I thought, I think it's the be it's the best GT car I ever I ever raced. For me, it was the best. Just, just the fastest. Yeah, the fastest, most fun to drive. Yeah. It's approachable, isn't it? It's an it's an approachable car. Yeah. To to go and race, got a lot of traction, um, and, and and a lot of torque. Yeah. Um, it's got no vices. No, no, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not trying to catch you out no. out there, which is a an incredible thing for a car with that much power. I mean, how much? How it's. 600 brake horsepower yeah. V12. Yeah. Um, to be able to just jump in and go tearing around and feel at home in it, it's yeah. really straight away. Really, really quite. Well, I think special. that's why it was so good uh, because you know over the years, you know, a lot of people have driven there, those cars. A lot of people. You know, at, at Spa we had I had three teammates and none of them had driven the car before, you know, the weekend. And I was, I was quite worried about it, but it all worked out pretty well. We ended up finishing second, um, you know. And so, yeah, you could, you, could, you could obviously learn the car and be confident pretty damn quickly. Well, you were, you, you know, you've, you're on, top, on it already. So, you know, I, I think 32 is a pretty quick time. <laughs> it's not bad. Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> final question. How do you get the most out of it as a driver when you, you've well, you I'm not sure I'm going to be able to at my age. Oh come I, on! I, I'm not, <laughs> it, it's, it's quite it's quite sort of because um, all all the old memories come back and like as you say going down the craners it sort of feels like you can do it flat but you know my my mind's telling me I should you know the memory's coming back and my mind's telling me I could do it but I'm going no and into McLean's you know I used to go flat into McLean's. And then, but then you've got a very short braking distance, and you down two gears very quickly, and in, and <laughs> yeah. ooh, it all happens very quickly. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's not for me anymore. I, 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 I think I'm going to stick to the, the old stuff, the Cobra and the HWM. And 
but it's been great to drive it again. It has been great. Well, thanks very much for letting me have a run in it. It's been, it's well. been a great joy, and um, congratulations on, on everything you've done with it. Thank you very much.